Good afternoon, everyone. The Northwest PA Innovation Beehive is pleased to present Restaurant Success Stories. Today, we will be hearing from Crystal Robinson, the owner of the Yummy Taste and See. Your moderator for today's webinar is Chris Lentinen, the director of the Center for Branding and Strategic Communication at Penn West Edinburgh. Before we begin, I just have a couple of housekeeping items to go over with you. This webinar is being recorded. Should you have a question, please use the chat or Q&A box as those will both be monitored by myself. At the conclusion of this webinar, a $50 gift card to Voodoo Brewery will be given out to one lucky participant. I would like to now turn the webinar over to Chris. Chris, take it away, please. Thanks, Kathy. Um, yes, uh, everybody, just a big thanks to Kathy who has organized this entire week, all the panelists, all the events, the business plan boot camp that we're doing. Uh, she's really put all of her into this event. So I just want to thank her really quick. Of course, the highlight of this is Crystal. You're going to be talking mostly. So I'm just going to be setting you up here to tell your story and to uh, talk about some of the successes you've had, some of the challenges you've had. And if I don't hit any topic that you feel is important for small businesses and entrepreneurs, feel free to ask yourself a question that you then answer. Because we just want, we want this to be as useful as possible for any entrepreneurs who are, you know, watching now or watching down the road. So um, obviously you just got an introduction there. You're the owner of Taste and See Fruit and Veggie Bar and you're located in the flagship city food hall. Now Taste and See is all about healthy food. Uh, you serve smoothies, juices, breakfast, lunch, and much more. And uh, you've just added soups yeah. for the winter. <laughs> Absolutely. So did I hit everything on the menu just so we can so we can get that out there? So if any interested parties want to know, they can stop in. So there is this component of really healthy desserts. Okay. Um, we have some of my favorite desserts on the menu uh, is the Chicka Cheesecake Fruit Cup. Mm -hmm. And so it's this cheesecakey dessert with, um, you can do bananas which is my favorite, strawberries or blueberries. Um, we have the loaded apples, which is the ultimate perfect dessert. Like how can, how can something so healthy be so tasty? Um, and so, yeah, there's this dessert component that people kind of haven't been accustomed to yet. Um, and so we're doing our best to introduce like what healthy looks like on a desserty end. And so, yeah. I think you're already touching on this, but what were some of your bigger goals when you started Taste and See in regards to delivering something unique to the downtown community in particular? And you know, obviously people can come from outside of downtown, but there was something missing from downtown to you that you wanted to that you wanted to take advantage of and deliver. Yeah. And so um, for me, uh, there are kind of three main goals. The first one was the accessibility to fresh foods like fruits and veggies. Initially, when the idea came for Taste and See, um, I worked at Erie Insurance and I happened to be on break one day and I'm like, okay, I need a, like my body literally spoke to me. I was like, we want a fresh smoothie. And so I'm like, all right, Google, where can I get a smoothie from? And the only place that was listed was the juice jar. And I'm like, I I just can't make it to the juice jar mm -hmm. and back within my time. And I'm like, how is it that we're downtown Erie, that we're downtown anywhere, and I cannot get access to something fresh? And so that was one of our goals, um, or one of my goals was laying the foundation for Taste and See was to make healthy accessible, to mm -hmm. make really simple foods, really essential foods accessible to the downtown area. Um, I mean. In downtown, we're surrounded by a lot of working professionals. There's Erie Insurance, of course. There's the hospital. There's the university. There's the courthouse. So there are so many, you know, just essential people who do essential things who need access to essential food. So that was one of my main goals was to just make healthy accessible. Gotcha. Um, another goal was to be able to educate people on um, the benefits of really simple foods. You know, all of our lives, we hear eat your fruits and veggies. Um, and so it's just like, I think just now the past several years, we're stepping in and adopting the concept of eating better, you know, look good, feel good, eat good kind of thing. 
Um, but it was, it, to me, it's like, okay, how can I really educate you on the food choices that you make being critical to like the sustainability of your life, the longevity of your life? Um, and it's really cool because someone came in this morning and they're like, someone gave you a testimonial today. And I'm like, really? <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's um, you know, an individual who she couldn't get rid of this cold, but she said last week or not cold, but like after effects from COVID and she had like some inflammation in her body and, and she came and got a smoothie last week because I'm like, I got you. Like, let me let me concoct something for you. And she drank it and, and she like shared with her entire team. I really like honestly felt the difference in my body after mm. drinking the smoothie that you made me. So that was cool, which leads me to my third goal for Taste and See was to change people's perception of what healthy is supposed to taste like. You know, it's not just snack on a carrot. You know, I, I think we have this boring, bland, ah, healthy's nasty. But it's just like if if you only taste and see, you'll take you'll you'll see that healthy is tasty. Gotcha. Um, so you know, obviously we're gonna talk about, you know, the struggles of being a business owner today, but I want to start out a little more positive, mm -hmm. right? On that sense. What about being an entrepreneur is like fun and rewarding to you? What about being a business owner and being a manager of employees? you know, makes you smile and makes your day worth it? Um, for me, because I've, <laughs> that's actually on a struggle then. <laughs> um, Even the benefits are struggles? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I mean, so when I have, okay, I, I can speak to like something that is really cool about mm -hmm. Taste and See um, is our team. This summer, I was able to hire eight young ladies. This was their first time being employed with anyone so it was there like I got my workers permit I'm ready to work and it was really cool to provide an employment opportunity to first-time workers I mean one including um, my daughter who's 14 mm. I'm a single mom and so me kind of walking through life and going this, through this process and being able to provide this opportunity um, to young people and first-time workers and being able to set the stage for what a work experience should be like, what yeah. work relationships should look like. Um, and so that part was pretty fun. They they all kind of became like little babies to me. And which is, I, I'm like, now I have to find someone to manage them because my heart is always in a place of wanting people to um, grow and accelerate um, within their own personal development. And mm -hmm. so being able to watch that process, like I, I definitely seen these young ladies grow um, throughout the course of the summer. And so just being able to watch people grow and develop some skills that whether you stay with Taste and See for forever or you take these skills somewhere else, something fun for me as an entrepreneur is being able to help plant those seeds of development in people. Yeah. Did you, do you remember your first job? Yeah. Did you have any sort of similar, was it a positive experience? You don't have to name the place if it was a negative experience, but I think it's interesting to hit on that since now you're somebody's first boss. Yeah. You know? Um, my first time job, it, it was uh I've always worked in retail. I've okay. always only did retail. And so like I didn't even come from a background in food and beverage or you know, anything like that. And so this is like a whole new world world universe. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, my first time job, I, I worked at Marshall's. And, yeah. and yeah. it was cool. It was fun. I worked with one of my best friends from high school and um, it was simple. And, and I don't think I was looking to get anything, but I also don't think there was anyone looking to pour into me the way I look to pour into my employees. Mm -hmm. um, for anyone who comes in, my thought process is that I don't need you to, to blend smoothies or make wraps. That's the very easy part. That's something that's teachable. Um, but do you learn to show up on time? Do you learn to show up consistently? Do you learn to navigate relationships with other people? And so I did not have that. I, and I, I don't think it was wrong to not have that in my first job experience. Um, but for where I see culture now, for me, it's all about helping people develop. And so yeah. I think it's cool that I'm able to, to have that experience. 
Yeah, that's that's a definite positive for sure. I'm glad we started on that note. Um, now, Taste and See has been around for how long now? In seven days, we okay. will be around for one year. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, this is pretty early on in your lifespan, but I assume that, you know, again, as an entrepreneur, you are self-improving. You are, you know, learning about different fields of owning a small business. So what have you been concentrating on in terms of, I want to learn about this. I want to self-improve in this area. What have, what have been, what's been your focus in that regard? Um, so my focus has been to learn it all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but more specifically, um, marketing is, okay. is, is a really big one because it's one thing to have and in which I think Taste and See does. Taste and See has an amazing product line. And not only do we have a product in which we can here, here's a smoothie, but again, the benefits of you having access to, to smoothies mm -hmm. and wraps and you know, cleaner food and things like that. Um, and so what happens is because of where we're located, we're located inside the flagship city food hall. When people come into the food hall, there are options. And so for me, being able to market Taste and See to grab those people um, who aren't running like healthy, I've seen people like literally <laughs> run down, <laughs> run down the yeah. aisle there, like away from healthy. And I'm like, man, you could have just added like so much to your life by one little smoothie. Um, but yeah, so it's really this dynamic of being able to get people in and again, do that part of changing their perception of what healthy is supposed to taste like. And so marketing has been critical because I believe that Taste and See has, again, an amazing product line, but yeah. it's getting people to understand, like, it's good for you, it's good to you. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, not crazily expensive. Right. Um, and so, yeah, marketing has been one of the, like, just strong people. In. And, and another thing is I like the fact that Taste and see, my attempt with taste and see has to be more than tra a transaction. Uh, how can I really get involved in your life? How can I keep in touch? How can we continue to educate you? Of course, how can we keep you coming back? But not yeah. so that you buy, 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 but so that you become more whole. And I think you're, you know, we're working together right now on yeah. that marketing aspect. And I think one thing that you are really doing just an awesome job of that wasn't our suggestion at all. It was just what you were doing was you had all these pictures of people enjoying your products. And I mean, you'd be, I think you'd be amazed at how many businesses and restaurants just don't take photos like that. You know, like just people with their products, smiling with a smoothie, smiling. And I think with like a sit down restaurant, that's probably more difficult, you know, mm -hmm. coming up with a camera and taking a picture <laughs> of them as they're eating. But I think you have some sort of rapport with your customers that they seem very comfortable being on your social feeds, getting their pictures taken. Do you feel like that's something that starts immediately when they walk up to the counter? Or how do you feel like your interactions with customers kind of lead to that story being told again in these outside venues, social media extended? Yeah, so that has been a super fun part of the you know, story of taste and see is for other people, like for people to see what it looks like mm -hmm. for those who have tasted and have seen, right? And so, um, you know, once I, and, and I'm always like, taste it before you leave, because I want to make sure that you that like, like it. it. Yeah. Um, and that's for two reasons, because I don't want you to turn around and you're like, yuck, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, if we can fix it, I want to be able to fix it right right here. And I've never had that happen. And so I'm really glad. Um, but once I can tell that someone is like, oh my gosh, it looks so good here. The vibe feels amazing right here. Like the energy from this place is like, you know, once I can tell that there's really this, I hate to say energy, but like this re really this positive connection, um, you know, it's it's at that moment in which I'm like, this is an example of someone who has tasted it. Like, here's the evidence that all you have to do is come to taste and see the taste and see. And so that's a really fun part of capturing, you know, how people feel. We made a, um, this is going back to the desserts, a ice creamless banana split it's a fruit banana split 
and it was maybe an eight-year-old who had it and her mom was like she is in heaven <laughs> she hasn't been this quiet all day and I'm like I'm glad like and we got her picture because she's just like I want this and I want that mm -hmm. and so it's been really fun to capture like the experience of someone who who comes in and there's just an, an experience at Taste and Scene. Yeah this might be a tougher question and we can take it in a couple different ways but do you have any advice for other, again, business owners, entrepreneurs about finding what their story is? Because I feel like that's half the battle, right? Is like finding what your, your what your narrative's going to be, because that's going to kind of be what you build everything out from, right? Your yeah. social persona and what you post and even like how you, again, greet customers and everything. So do you have any advice for anybody that maybe doesn't have like a, a great story in place? Yeah, so I think your your business is going to be a reflection of you just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so for me, okay, I, and a lot of people think this was your dream. You you became an entrepreneur and you, you're doing what you've always dreamed of doing. And I'm like, guys, this was not my reality. I did not dream of being um, an owner in a smoothie bar it was a solution. I felt like we needed healthy, we needed fresh and accessible. And I guess I was just willing enough to, to I was just obedient enough to make that a thing. And so it was a lot of research. Um, my advice would be, you know, to, to research and you know what you like, you know things. And I'm always like, even when I make a smoothie and I taste it, if I like it, then they're probably going to like it. Mm -hmm. And and if not, they'll tell me what they like. But it's like you found your, you know, why are you doing it? Yeah. And then you use that to kind of base your, your business story around yeah. that. Right. And yeah. And just being authentic to, to what the need is and being authentic to what, what makes people, because ultimately it's, it's not about me. It's about mm -hmm. what people want and people want, I feel like to be whole people want to be healthy, whether it's, nutritionally mentally spiritually physically mm -hmm. um and so that's one of the really cool things about taste and see fruit and veggie bar is that it can go a few different ways and 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 just be really cool yeah welcome larry hi, hi. <laughs> larry uh larry franco you're the owner and operator of franco's cafe correct so do you want to tell our uh, listeners and viewers where you're located and what you specialize in we're on um in the Renaissance Center on 10th and State, Neary. First and, floor, correct? Correct. Yep. And um, we, our biggest deal is our salad bar. That's uh, our claim to fame. Uh, we've been there, this is 12 years now, today. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. And um, we, we really didn't know which way we would go. We were just, we started off with, uh, you know, because... Uh, the gentleman that had it before me, he just made sandwiches with toast and he had the salad bar, but it was kind of just thrown together. And then uh, as we went along, I found a couple of panini presses in the place and I said, well, let's try panini. So I Googled how to make a panini. <laughs> and then um, we came up with our, uh, our own menu. And then I saw how the salad bar was taken off and it just turned into a hit. And uh, throughout the years, it's just, pretty much what I'm known for. Were these people primarily working in the Renaissance Center or did we you had, find we, others coming we, in from outside? We had a lot in the beginning just from the Renaissance Center itself. Um, and then as word of mouth got along, we start getting the banks, uh, national fuel gas, and uh, uh, yet now with uh, VNEC coming in, we got a lot from there, Gannon. Um, it's... Uh, and it just keeps progressing. And mostly it's because I tried different uh, avenues of advertising. And um, mostly it's just word of mouth. Gotcha. You know? So right before you came in, uh, I asked Crystal, the owner of Taste and See, like she was just talking about, about um, self-improvement as an entrepreneur, learning new things, um, trying to branch out into different worlds, whether it's, you know, trying to get better at bookkeeping or, you know, other aspects of accounting. So what have you, what's been your avenues of self-improvement? What do you think you've gotten better at as you've well, grown fortunately, into this role? Fortunately, I was in fast food for okay. 20, 20 years, yeah. you know, so, and I started off uh, actually in high school. Uh, my family, we had a Dunkin' Donut franchise 
and I went on from there. And then, like I said, we went, I went through the fast food game, did a lot of corporate, you know. And so it taught me a lot. Um, I was running a store out in Girard, and it was very, you know, the the traffic wasn't that much. So to make money, I had to find, you know, how do you cut labor? How do you cut um, food costs, waste, everything? And I was able to be successful there. And then um, when I went to another uh, fast food uh, corporate job, um, they taught you more like they taught, they treated you like a business owner as a store manager. So I got to, instead of just accounting for the profit and loss statement, we actually built it. We, um, you know, did the projections and everything. So it gave me a lot of insight going into on my own because mm -hmm. I was at the time I was 55 and I said, I got to do this on my own. And um, I found the, the location that I'm at. And, uh, and like you said, you just learn as you go, yeah. you know, because uh, a lot of, you know, being with corporate, you know, if you do screw up, yeah, you got that to fall back on, you know, somebody will catch whatever, you just catch a lot of hell for it. But here you're on your own. You just got to play the game yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the thing that helped me the most was um, out of all the corporate jobs that I had, part of your bonus was uh, customer service. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to make extra money, better learn how to do some good customer service. And that also, you know, it it all falls into place. You just better customer service, the more money you make, you know. So, um, and then that's pretty much how the cafe is. We're, you know, it's, it seems like uh, we just, you know, everybody's friendly there, you know, because after being in uh, fast food, you know, they beat you up over the dollar menu here. They don't care what they're spending. Mm -hmm. They just come in. Keep a smile on your face, serving good food. Everything's cool. Um, I've noticed you're not much of a, I was looking at your social accounts today, right? You have a, a robust, I would say, Google profile. You got a lot of reviews, a lot of people with a, a lot of great things to say, but you don't, you know, social is there, but you're not posting every day. So when it comes to that in-person marketing, which you rely on, what kind of tips would you offer other entrepreneurs about Again, that customer service, making sure people pass along the good word. Is there strategies in that world or is it more so it's, be a nice person and it's going to happen? Well, not exactly because you still got to know business, okay. you know, and a, a lot of people say, well, what do I do if I want to be in business? And I direct, direct them straight to the SBDC hmm. because uh, uh, it's like when I first met the this one gentleman that used to work for SBDC, he asked me what made me decide to get a cafe and I told him, you know, all the experience I had in the restaurant. He says, oh, because some people just do this because they like to cook. And I said, well, that's not very smart because uh, if uh, you, there's so many things, it's like even with uh, my son, my stepsons, they all want to uh, progress into the restaurant game too. And I, I direct them right over here mm. and just say, you know, they're going to let you know what you need to know to be in business because it's I make it look too easy, I think, you know, so, <laughs> and it's, it's not, it's like, because they, they think I'm stress-free, well, you know, try to run a restaurant during a pandemic. Is <laughs> we're we're going to get to that, yeah. we're going to get to that. Um, Crystal, you're shaking your head, and I know you've worked with the SBDC as well, so do you want to talk about your experience with them and the benefits you've gotten from that organization in particular? Yeah, um, I have a few favorites within the SBDC. Well, feel, um, feel free to name them. I'm sure they'd love that. <laughs> um, no, I can't name them because then I don't want to miss anyone. Okay, um, okay. But the entire organization has been amazing. And um, just having the access to the resources that are provided, I, I know I would not be um, as successful as I've been able to be with going into year one um, without the help of the SBDC and the resources that were provided. And I mean, there are some people that I meet with on a weekly to bi-weekly basis just to make sure, you know, and, and it wasn't like a, okay, you're done 
good luck. See you later. We're on to the next client. Um, I love the fact that there's this ongoing relationship of continued, mm -hmm. you know, help. And, and if we don't have it here, we'll point you in the direction of someone, you know, who does. I know it was uh, Kathy Roach, who, if you come to Taste and See, uh, the dollar on the wall there, my my first dollar. That's hers. It's, it's for Kathy. You told me that. That's awesome. <laughs> it's super exciting to just um, not just with the SBDC, but, you know, with throughout Erie, the resources and, and the help that I've received, um, even with uh, Bridgeway Capital, it's been significant in mm -hmm. the foundation of Taste and See. Right. And so resources are important and uh, the help that is provided by local resources like SBDC, they're, they're essential. And mm -hmm. if you can take advantage of it, do it. If, if it would be a help to you, it is a help to you, utilize it. That's what they're there for. And, and to carry on to her point, if, um, you know, it's, it's the resource I wish I had, you know, because 12 years ago when I started, I just went in knowing what I know. And uh, as the years went by, I started realizing just how many more resources I could have utilized in the beginning to make <laughs> life a lot easier, you know, be, between making, uh, in like, a, I formed an LLC, they could help, I mean, they could help you with your business plan, everything, the financing, like you said, with Bridgeway, you know, there's so many things that I could have utilized, but I went hardball, you know, old school, did it, <laughs> so, but, uh, and, and that's why I refer everybody that wants to get in business, just go there, because mm -hmm. they'll either, show you what to do or tell you you don't need to be in business you know right. pretty much they'll they'll lay it right out for you you know this is what you have to be able to do this is what we can do for you but you got to know what you know you got to have it in because th there's a lot of people that i've told about sbdc that probably even came here but didn't follow through with it they just uh well they're not doing anything for me well they're not supposed to run your business they're supposed to guide you to do the business, you know? So, uh, and that, that's what I think they, they got mixed up. They thought that, uh, helping them with the business is running it for them. And no, you gotta, you gotta, it's your business. You gotta run it. Yeah. And it's, I think with all the economic organizations in the region, there has to probably be follow-up on both ends. Right. Mm -hmm. I know with the beehive, if, you know, the, the client is, not as passionate as we are about the project and you know it's not going to fully work out so um i think you made a great point that there has to be follow through you're going to get out of it oh it's the out of saying, they didn't have you know? beehive when i started yeah, yeah. it's like all of a sudden wow <laughs> more resources yeah we did get a question so let me just read that off uh this question reads i know both business owners and they in my opinion have a high level of positivity and franco humor apparently he also <laughs> mentioned that how has their positive disposition equipped them to start and maintain a business so we'll start with you well when i first i actually found the cafe on craigslist sandwich okay. okay so i brought the wife and kid i said well what do you think she, she goes i don't know you know <laughs> I, I i just looked i go i see a lot you know just potential and uh, as we were going through the first few years, you know, she, she'd go, wow, you're paying out more than you're taking in. You know, fortunately, I had some backup, you know, as far as cash flow and stuff. So I said, that's okay. We're coming. And, you know, and then as we go, we just kept building, 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 and now we are what we are. Mm -hmm. But like you said, the positive, the positive, they always got it, you know. Because uh, the guy that had it before me, he would sit there and just grumble because he would, didn't have any business, you know. So nobody wants to see that, you know, because you, why do you want to go in and eat any foods from somebody that's all depressed and <laughs> screaming at people and stuff? It's like, but uh, yeah, it's, it's posit positivity. That's I'm all about that. Well, Crystal, you're in those first couple of years that Larry was just talking about. So yeah. how have you kept positive and maintained, you know, like like we talked about, you you have an air of positivity, definitely. So how have you kept that strong and taken it day by day in that sense? 
Yeah, so I think it, it and to whoever thinks I'm positive, thank you very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and that, that's just me by nature. Um, again, I think a part of your business model and what it looks like is going to represent who you are as the business owner. Um, it's always been within my nature to be positive, to be optimistic, to be, again, people are like, this was your dream. You you love to cook. No, I don't love to cook. I, I didn't love to make smoothies. I did not own a blender until the EDDC called me for the opportunity to begin this interview process. And so um, for me, it was, I'm, I'm a solutionist. I like to provide solutions. And, and I feel like when you can just take a product that's needed and you can provide that service um, and you can do it authentically and, and with a smile. And I mean, my, my major in college was communications. I went to Clarion University. Um, by nature, I've always been, um, you know, a leader. And, and so I think being positive is just, it's a reflection of who I am at heart. Mm. Um, and and I'm glad that that shows. And and I've had people come to the counter, and even if they didn't make a purchase, they're just like, "It's a really good vibe here. Like you, your team, you're always smiling, you're always happy, and and that feels good to know yeah. that people genuinely see that that is a part of this brand, that is a build out of what Taste and See is supposed to, and and we want to reflect. I had a customer today come in, and he says every time I hear it. Everybody's smiling. He goes, I've never been at a restaurant where everybody's smiling. I said, well, we just, everybody's happy, you know? Yeah. So that's our goal. Make sure everybody stays happy. Now, you had, you just brought up college, so that got me thinking. And you had previously mentioned that you have children, right, that want to get into the restaurant business. Right. So I wonder, and we have a lot of younger entrepreneurs in the Beehive system, you know, that either have inventions or have businesses already off the ground. If you could talk to the younger entrepreneurs about maybe what to take in college or maybe like how to prepare yourself to own a business, what would you say to those younger, let's say 30 and under, you know, entrepreneurs that are just kind of getting started in this world? Well, they really got to know about finances and, um, you know, because like I said, it's not just cooking and selling products, it's uh, paying taxes, paying payroll, paying you know, you, you got to, there's so much more involved than just uh, taking in money and, and, and buying stuff. It's, uh, you got to be able to uh, budget. It's, it's, there's so many different things. And, and like I said, I make it look easy because it's all in my head, you know, whereas, uh, I don't know, writing down on a book just seems like a waste of time to me because, I mean, I, there's certain figures you have to, of course, but where I got on the computer. But um, that's another thing. It's like, you know, I'm old school, you know, computers, it, but you got to embrace technology and technology has been a big part of growing my business, mm -hmm. you know, just with uh, uh, just my POS system and stuff like that. Uh, computers, it's like um, when I first had the cafe, I'd come in with a briefcase with all my, you know, uh, notes and, and, and stuff like that. Now it's, it's all emails. I mean, I can't live without my iPhone. <laughs> it's like, it's all right there. It's like, uh, today I needed more menus. So I just put, pull up a laptop and I set it down to the basin where my uh, printer is. And boom, I got them. You know, it's like, mm. it's little stuff like that. But they, that's what they need to do. They, they need to learn the basics. If they're going to go, uh, it, it doesn't matter what you're selling. It's just, it's how it's just like what you're going to do is how how you apply yourself how you're gonna you know uh and just you just gotta like i said keep up with all the basics paying your bills making sure you got budgeted not over expense you know because i don't know how many times i heard of where people bought a business and they go oh, I'm, I'm in business now they went out bought a fancy car bought a nice big house and all of a sudden they're, going, they're bankrupt but uh they just got to know uh, you know how to how to play the game right and and build as you go so yeah so I love the concept of the the old school with the new school here <laughs> um because I'm I'm listening and I'm like yes the basics are important however 
um, my advice to a like a 30 and under or someone who's younger but wants to pursue being an entrepreneur, um, I I did not know a thing. I, I did not know a thing. And and for me, it was you can learn what you don't know. And so if you are out there and you have this idea of for a product or you know, an invention, whatever your idea might be um, or the avenue in which you want to go into business, my advice is, is that you pursue that thing. And, and there's going to be a difference on whether you become an entrepreneur or not, because you're kind of, Larry, it is, right? Good. You're going to put the work in and that separates, you know, those who are sincere about it um, from those who aren't. I, I, was still working a full-time job. I am a single mom, um, but, but it was just, and and I don't have an iPhone, I have a Samsung. <laughs> 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 but because I didn't even have like a good laptop at the time. Yeah. But I mean, like, hey, Google, what, like you said, you Google Panini. It's just a matter of putting the work in, do your research, spend time, with that idea really and it took me the idea came in 2018 um and 2000 we opened last year in 2021 I kind of laid the foundation within over a three-year period hmm. you know I would get an idea I would write it on paper but it was like the more time I spent with this thing the more research uh, research I did, the more resources I realized I had access to, the more relationships I built. I mean, it was me doing my part to make sure that if this is something that I want, it's going to look like. And, and I love the fact that you said people think that we make it look easy. Right. If you guys only knew, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> it is not as easy. Those as sleepless easy. nights wondering how the <laughs> next bill is going to get paid. <laughs> Like, it's not as easy as it looks, yeah. but my advice to anyone who wants to do it. You know what else they forget is like, because uh, especially with the kids, they saw me start from nothing. And then they forget about that. Mm -hmm. Back when you had to fight for every bill and had to fight for every dollar. All they see now is, you know, after it's all said and done, when things are looking sweet, you know, but the. Uh, and it's, I think a lot has to do with how you embrace failure, you know, I mean, not total failure, but just, you know, you got right. your goals, yeah, you got your goals and stuff, and then you realize, oh, that's not going to work, so you got to know when to pull the plug on an idea, and and things like that, and then that's something you teach the younger people, you know, just because, you know, sure, go for what you can, have the passion to do it, but know when to get out, you know, if, if you have it. You know, it's like when I first got the cafe, I made my uh, lease and I said, I want a one year escape clause because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to get locked into a whole bunch of years. And then all of a sudden it, it just didn't work. But like you said, with the positive and stuff, you just push along and make it happen. And one of the things I wanted to add was use what you have. I mean, if if you have and so many people came up and they're like I was going to do this like I think it's such a great idea and I'm like well if you would have I would have been able to just come get a smoothie that yeah, day and, yeah. and I wouldn't have the stress that I have how many people tell you what to sell <laughs> it's like you want to sell these well, why don't you sell it yeah you know it's like <laughs> but yeah just you use what you have you know you you have an idea just begin to to sit down and imagine like your imagination is really critical to the things that you you want to do i want to hit a couple of the restaurant based pain points that i'm sure you're both dealing with the first is you know the highly publicized staffing shortages everywhere so i don't know if either of you are dealing with that right now or who wants to tackle this first and maybe maybe the question is how have you overcome it or how are you currently dealing with it in your specific way so I think it's, uh, and I learned a lot of this through corporate. It's like how you treat your employees because the retention was always bad, you know, with uh, especially in fast food. And uh, we we always had to think of ways to, you know, uh, they come up with uh, little gimmicks of uh, they'll have employee week or this and that, you know. 
it's it's how you treat the employee you know if if you're and um if you treat them with respect you're going to get it back if you treat them right they're going to do it for you i don't know how many times as a store manager i had uh these my under management come up and go hey can you get somebody to cover this shift i said you can't no they won't work for me well you know you know so i'd call them i said come on let's let's see what and then i'd have a chat with my under management to say you know if you treat these kids right you're going to get what you need and get it get it going so it's and then basically and what helped me too is i got family to help out it's it's a small operation so it's not where uh, I have to use a lot of people. I know my son, he wants to, he's got these delusions of grandeur. He wants, oh, I want this type of place. I go, all you're doing is giving yourself, paying more money out and a lot of headaches. You know, it's like, just lock in on what you can do with, like eventually just take this place over and, and lock in on what you can do. It's right there. It's, I mean, the writing's on the wall. I go, I told him there's ways of building it to be more prosperous. It's like, I'm at a comfortable level right now, but if you want to, you know, and I told him what he could do, it's like, you know, move on catering, move on this, move on that. There's so many different opportunities that can happen, but uh, it's all, like you said, you got to have the drive, you got to just, um, and the follow through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, so, Treating your employees good is, is a really big deal. I have Miss um, Margie, who is uh, my manager. She came in as my manager, and she's 60 plus, um, and amazing woman. Like, her work ethic is out of this world. I'm like, can we get more Miss Margie? Um, but one of the statements that she's made, you know, with working with me in Taste and See is that in her 60 plus years, she has never had an employer like me. And I'm like, wow, me? Um, and so treating your employees is, is a really big deal um, because it helps with That's your huge, attention. Yeah. And so I've been able to keep, even my young ladies who in turn with me, you know, they started this past summer. Um, I've seen two yesterday and they're like, I still got my job right this summer. Like, so now I don't have to seek employment for this upcoming summer. Um, because they're excited to come back to work and there's this environment that they have and they like working was fun for them and there were some stressful moments but it was fun now speaking to the culture of like employment as it's looking right now because there's been a struggle there with mm -hmm. with the uh, taste and see as well we are we keep a team of, of less than 10 um, only two people fit comfortably in our space um, and so working with a small team, that can be hard at times. Um, and then, you know, I, I think there's what the millennials and is this that what they are? I'm a millennial, the Gen Z, or mm -hmm. as they call them. There's something in the air and in which they just, I, I don't know if it's a parenting thing or I don't know what it is, but they don't seem to want to work no matter how good I am as an employer, no matter how much respect I give them, there's something lacking on their end. So I really think, I don't know what we need to do as a culture or society that helps them understand these. this is what's expected when you get into a job force. Because I'm looking at, you know, some of the individuals and I'm like, if you can't make it here at Taste and See, you cannot go to Erie Insurance across the street you know, with some of these same habits and, and mm -hmm. same dynamics. And so I don't know, like I'm, I'm really looking at and I'm, I'm stressed right now when it comes to I'm looking to, you know, just build my team um, so that the flexibility is there. But I don't know what it is about the, the younger people who just are missing some of those soft skills that really ready them for because our jobs aren't hard. You know, mm -hmm. what were the expectations are, those parts aren't hard, but it's just when you come and you're working for a check, it, it doesn't help you. It doesn't help me because that's the easy part. And, and I will just kind of put a plug in right now for um, PA Career Link. Uh, they have several different programs that they're looking for these young individuals between like the ages of 18 and, and up. Mm -hmm. um, if you fit within different criteria. 
um, then you qualify. And it's uh, PA Career Link. They have programs in which they pay the people to to come work for you as an employer. But then there's that, you know, working of building these soft skills out. And so PA Career Link has been really resourceful um, in providing, you know, people who are looking to work and build and, and develop some of those soft skills um, awesome. as they learn and grow. Have either, I, I assume you have been affected by inflation, but is do you, either of you have anything to say on that topic? Because obviously that's the other big, you know, restaurant-based issue, I'm sure. I think what bothers me the most is they keep still blaming it on the pandemic. I mean, they're saying it's supply and demand due to the pandemic and I go, come on. You know, you're just beating a dead horse with this. And then then they say, well, if we raise the interest rates, that's going to cure the pandemic. I mean, the inflation. No, it's making it worse. You know, it's it's just, uh, I don't know. It's every, I get sticker shocked every time I go to the store. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just. Uh, so when you're buying supplies for Franco's, you're definitely noticing a difference. Oh, of, yeah. Oh, without a doubt. It's like uh, there's so, some suppliers I won't even use anymore because they doubled their price. Yeah. And um, it's, it's ridiculous. And, and the worst part about it being that we are a small business, like say Coke. Okay. If I want to buy Coke, they're going to charge me almost as much as the store does, you know, it's, and it's, or actually sometimes more. And um, because we're small, but if we're big, then, you know, it'd be a whole different story. And uh, that, that's what makes it a lot, a lot tougher on small business, you know, because here we're going, we're trying to buy, like, I need to buy lettuce. Now you can't even get lettuce. You know, it's like, it's, it's just weird. You know, they run out of stuff all the time it's during the pandemic they ran out of gloves you know they wanted i think uh the one month i spent for a case of gloves forty dollars and the following month it went up to 75 and i'm going uh, where when does it end yeah it's, are you same thing i assume yeah i felt it and and i guess the better i, I don't know if i was in a better position because i didn't know what to expect but I mean, there were times in which I'm like, this was $7 cheaper last week. And so it was something that I did feel. And I know with us going into year one, year one for me as an entrepreneur, which Larry, I mentioned I'm seven days out from being one year in. Wow. And so, <laughs> uh, it's been cool to get to this to this point. Oh, um, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. Um, but one of the things that I'm like, year one, I'm winging it. Like, I'm just doing what oh, yeah. I think, you know, this is the best to do. But I tell and you, look how much you learn. I've, I've learned so much. And, and there's just this you get in and you get your hands dirty. That but see, you're the type you of know. person that broadens out that is willing to, to learn. Yeah. You know, other people just think, well, you know, they, they I don't know whether it's a mental block or what the deal is, but you just got to be able to, you know, uh, adapt yeah adapt and adjust and, and that's what I've had to do you know with inflation I uh, mm-hmm. spent several hours just this morning price comparing like okay I've been buying this from here is it the same price as what I was paying before is it cheaper here is it cheaper there and so I'm like building out the spreadsheet and looking at cost of goods and like what can we cut and I like the fact that taste and see we have a seasonal option or like seasonal menu. And so it's just like, thank goodness we can get rid of this because if I keep buying it, it's going to keep up my cost. And it's like, yeah. So inflation has been a really- You know, and and to tell you the truth, for the 12 years that I've been there, all I do is shop every day. (laughs) I mean, I took my son 10 years ago, I took my son to Sam's Club, then we went to GFS, then we went to- uh, Wegmans that I go and I'm telling him how much this costs compared to the store he goes dead you know the worst part about it is you know all this <laughs> you know but that's all I do is I shop so it's, you know so people go hey where can I get any so I'll go over here they got the best price there you know <laughs> it's just but you got it you know but we have to watch every dollar we have, we have you know it's, it's a nickel dime business pretty much you know you just uh like I said everybody thinks oh yeah you just buy this and you sell this for this price no it's like you gotta you gotta come up with a, a plan it's like when i first built my menu like i said 12 years ago 
I just took how much it was going to cost me to make a certain sandwich times three. And that, that was your basic. And then you go from there because then that covers pretty much everything. If you can keep around a, a 30, 35% food cost, you're, you're pretty good, you know? So, and um, that's always your, uh, your base point. And then you go from there, but um, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, you know, cause all of a sudden you see this case of product go up, like you said, seven bucks, mm -hmm. eight bucks, 20 bucks. It's, you know, it's nuts. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then you, and you can't just keep raising your prices. That's the whole problem. Yeah. I mean, I try so hard to keep my prices. So it's reasonable. Like, people can't believe that my prices are that low having a business downtown, but you know, I said, I'm making money. I'm good. You know, I don't have to hose everybody just because I, I have a business. I just treat them fair. And right. that's why they come back. So we got about 10 minutes of discussion left. One thing I wanted to hit on before we ran out of time is we've talked about, you know, organizations like the Beehive, like the SBDC, like Paramount Pursuits, like um, PA, what was the employment? PA Career Link. PA Career Link. Um, but I also wanted to ask if there's any fellow entrepreneurs in the Erie scene that you have either leaned on or asked questions of or been like just vented to, you know, like, so Crystal, you're shaking your head. Who have been the entrepreneurs that you've leaned on in that way? Um, Chrissy. Um, and right now, because I call her Chrissy, um, Christina Vogel. She okay. is the owner, um, only female franchise owner of Donato's Pizza oh, cool. um, with the three locations. And um, her third location just opened. And I just happened to like, it is, it is so cool to be able to network and meet people. And, and that's really something that's critical as an entrepreneur is to always be networking and not so that you can always be getting, but so that you can be building relationships because she just kind of, she's always available. And I'm like, how are you always accessible to me? You know, when you, you, you brand, you own a uh, franchise three pizza shops, like that is so cool to me, but she's been really big. Jen um, over at Pop Luck, uh, she's been essential. Um, and I don't want to miss any. You're just in the whole I, Green Garden Plaza. I am. Basically. <laughs> like, you, you made friends with all of those people. I, of, um, even Hannah Kirby with Ember and Ford, but she was, you know, super cool to to talk to and just kind of like, how does this work for you? And I, I like the fact that they're people too, like business owners, yes, but you know they had to start and and it was hard. And I'm excited to become friends with Larry because I'm like I'm going to pick his brain. Like <laughs> you're a new friend to me, Larry, because it's just you you need to be able to sit and and have conversations with people who can relate to where you've been, where you are, where you want to go. And um, I, I'm super thankful for the fellow entrepreneurs that are out there who have availed themselves to me um, in conversation. Larry, who's, who's the people that you've vented to over the years and have helped you on the path? I just vent. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I, I don't know. It's I, like I said, it's old school. I mean, I know so many different business owners from growing up yeah and um anybody on state street that you've uh, become friends with or anything like that I, or I, in, in your area well I, i'm friends with a lot of business owners but the, you know you like uh joel from uh vena you know i mean more or less uh good acquaintances a lot of bankers you know and uh, a lot of lawyers and stuff like that but uh actually but they're all in a different type of uh business than i am you know and it's it's usually my clientele that I, I, yeah, I talk to, and then we, you know, we go back and forth on, of course, different things. Try to keep it out of the political realm, but that's kind of hard too. Right, right. And then uh, <laughs> we've done a good job today. Yeah. We got five more minutes. <laughs> no problem. But uh, yeah, so it, you know, um, like I said, it, a lot had to do with what I learned through the years, just being in, you know, different types of business. And then going from there and applying it to myself. And uh, like I said, I make it look easy, but it's not. But there's uh, there are a few people that I'll get, you know, but it's just tidbits. It's really nothing to do with uh, 
where I'm going because there's, you know, the, you start getting into the, like the inflation and stuff like that. There's nothing we can really do about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just one vote, one person, one complaint, what have you. I mean, we could sit there and cry all we want about how much something costs, but everybody's still buying it. So it's going to keep going up. It's like, and then, um, you know, then I talked to a couple of finance guys go, well, you're just going to have to wait until that recession finally hits. And then once that happens, then all of a sudden it goes into the new cycle, you know, and it's like, so it's kind of frustrating, but it's something we have to deal with just like the pandemic. Right. <laughs> it's like, right. <laughs> um, oh, I believe Kathy's going to come back on and do a little raffle for a gift of some sort. Kathy, are you there? Oh, I totally am. And oh my gosh, both of you, thank you so much for spending time with Chris and the Beehive today. Um, your stories are truly inspirational. And um, I hope the people that were participating today um, learn some stuff, whether they're in the restaurant business or not. I think your stories resonate across any and all industries. And I also want to do a shout out because I forgot to do it when we started to the Gannon SBDC because it wasn't for them and their podcast room. We would not have this really cool setup today. Um, there is an issue with the Zoom today since it's the Gannon Zoom and not my individual one. So so I have to wait until I get the report on all of our um, attendees today, but I will be shouting out who will be the winner once I get that report. So um, until tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel at four o'clock, we are going to hear some stories from the manufacturing industry. And again, thank you so much to Crystal and Larry for spending time with us and sharing your stories. You're welcome. And yeah, you thank know. you, Chris, for being an excellent moderator. No problem. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.